Good morning. Sudha Murthy, how I taught my grandmother to read and other stories. Story number 5, The Red Rice Granary. Every year our country has to face natural disasters in some form. It may be an earthquake in Gujarat, floods in Orissa or a drought in Karnataka. In a poor country, these calamities create havoc. In the course of my work, I have found that after such calamities, many people like to donate money or materials to relief funds. We assume that most donations come from rich people, but that is not true. On the contrary, people from the middle class and the lower middle class help more. Rarely do rich people participate wholeheartedly. A few years back, I was invited to a reputed company in Bangalore to deliver a lecture on corporate social responsibility. Giving a speech is easy, but I was not sure how many people in the audience would really understand the speech and change themselves. After my talk was over, I met many young girls and boys. It was an affluent company and the employees were well off and well dressed. They were all very emotional after the lectures. Madam, we buy so many clothes every month. Can we donate our old clothes to those people who are affected by the earthquake? Can you coordinate and send them? Some of them offered other things. We have grown up children. We would like to give their old toys and some vessels. I was very pleased at the reaction. It reminded me of the incident in the Ramayana where during the constructions of the bridge between India and Lanka every squirrel helped Sri Rama by bringing a handful of sand. Please send your bags to my office. I will see that they reach the right persons. Within a week my office was flooded with hundreds of bags. I was proud that my lectures had proven so effective. On Sunday, along with my assistants, I opened the bags. What we saw left us amazed and shocked. The bags were brimming over with all kinds of junk, piles of high-heeled slippers, some of them without the pair. torn undergarments unwashed shirts cheap transparent sarees toys which had neither shape nor color unusable bedsheets aluminum vessels and broken castles were soon peeled in front of us like a mountain there were only a few good shirts sarees and unusable materials it was apparent that instead of sending the material to a garbage dump or the kabari wala these people had transferred them to my office in the name of donation the men and women i had met that day were bright well traveled well off people If educated people like them behave like this what would uneducated people do but then i was reminded of an incident from my childhood i was born and brought up in a village in karnataka's haveri district called shigion my grandfather was a retired school teacher and my grandmother krishtaka never went to school both of them hardly traveled and had never stepped out of karnataka yet they were hard working people who did their work wholeheartedly without expecting anything from anybody in their life their photographs never appeared in any paper nor did they go up 
on stage to receive a prize for the work they did they live like flowers with fragrance in the forest enhancing everyone around them but hardly noticed by the outside world in the village we have paddy fields and we used to store the paddy in granaries there were two granaries one was in the front and other at the back of the avows the better quality rice which was white was always stored in the front granary and the inferior quality which was a little thick and red was stored in the granary at the back in those days there was no communal divide in the village people from different communities lived together in peace many would come to our house to ask for arms there were muslims fakirs hindu dosias who roamed the countryside singing devotional song elama jogadish who appeared holding the image of goddess elama over their heads poor students and invalid people we never had too much cash in the house and the only help my grandmother my grandfather could give these people was in the form of rice people who receive help to not talk take talk too much they would receive the rice smile and raise their right hand to bless us irrespective of their religion the blessing was always may god bless you my grandfather always looked happy after giving them arms i was a little girl then and not too tall since the entrance of the friend granary was low it was difficult for grown ups to enter so i would be give a given a small bucket and sent inside there i used to fill my fill up the bucket with rice and give it to them they would tell me how many measures they want in the evening my grandmother used to cook for everybody that time she would send me to the granary at the back of the house where the red rice was stored i would again fill up the bucket with as much as she wanted and get it for her to cook our dinner this went for many years when i was a little older i asked my grandparents a question what had been bothering me for long why should we eat the rice red rice always at night when it is not so good and give those people poor people the better quality rice my grandmother krishtaka smiled and told me something i will never forget in my life child whenever you want to give something to somebody give the best in you never the second best that is what i have learned from life god is not there in the temple mosque or church he is with the people if you serve them with whatever you have you have served god my grandfather asked my question in a different way our ancestors have taught us in the vedas that one should donate with kind words donate with happiness donate with sincerity donate only to the needy donate without expectation because it is not a gift it is a duty donate with your wife's consent donate to other people without making your dependents helpless donate without caring for caste creed and religion donate so that the receivers prospers this lesson from my grandparents told to me when i was just a little girl has stayed with me ever since 
if at all i am helping anyone today it is because of the teachings of those simple souls i did not learn them in any school or college